Hi, my name is Henrik Clausen. I work for Fagerholt. I've worked there for 23 years, but it's actually been lighting all my life. I started off as a young engineer and worked in Denmark for 12 years in another company and the last 23 years I've worked for Fagerholt. I have the privilege of being an associated professor at the University, Aalborg University in Copenhagen, where I teach lighting design together with seven other professors. This year we have 54 students from 24 countries, so lighting design is actually becoming a global thing and it seems that people like to come to Scandinavia because we have a certain emphasis, a certain approach to light which is different than the Central European and of course the, the Asian approach. So uh, we are very happy that so many people look at Scandinavian lighting design, not only Scandinavian furniture design or stuff like that, but actually also appreciate the way we do lighting and I would love to share a little bit more about that with you guys. Well if we look back in history we have to say that it all started with with Richard Kelly back in 1932 and uh, Kelly was the first one who actually did real lighting design. Before that it was more functional lighting. You needed to be sure that you didn't fall down the staircase if you were walking around or you could see the book that you were reading in. But Kelly introduced three terms that we are still using today. It was uh, focal glow, ambient illuminescence and play of brilliance. And the focal glow is actually the lighting on the task where you look at what you're doing and that's everything about legislation, all the standards, all the norms, all the stuff we do, we do that for according to, focal, to uh, the focal glow. But we need the ambient lighting, we need to show the space that we are in at the same time so it not, it's not just only showing or being able to solve a task but we also need to experience the space. And we do that by putting light on the walls, on the pictures, on the ambience around it so that you feel you're in a space. And that's sort of the two basics, but then we add the play of brilliance, which is a little bit brighter, it's a little bit sparkling, it's the clear incandescent lamp in the chandelier, it's the candle, it's the fireplace, it's all the, the thing that goes to you emotionally. And when you combine these three things, then you get good lighting. Let's say the focal glow is the steak, the ambient lighting are the potatoes and the play of brilliance are the spices. Ever since Kelly introduced the three basic principles back in the 50s, we've been looking to improve that a little bit more. So we added a glare reduction, we added energy savings and the way it looks now, now the big thing is well-being. So we've actually built on that basis. So whatever we do lighting design today, it's uh, rooted back in the philosophy from the 50s and then updated. But it's always important that we ask people, what is it that you want to achieve? Because it's very different if you want to do lighting in a school, in a garage or in the opera. So you cannot just say good lighting is the same for everyone. We actually make lighting for people. So when we make good lighting, it's based on the people, not so much on the place or the situation, but about the people in the space. How do they look? How do they interact? Should they be more distance between each other? Should they be more socializing? All that kind of stuff is what's part of good lighting. Still to be a thing. That was what I thought about to be an